Let us, <clears throat> Let us praise Joachim and Anne, to whom in their generation the Lord gave him, who was a blessing for all the nations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We have in this diocese for some years been building up that sense of the importance of grandparents, inviting them to come together on annual retreats, uh, giving thanks for the extraordinary gift they have, not just in the handing on of life to the next generations, but to the handing on of faith. I'd like to think where Aaron and Brighton leads, that I should be careful as it's on live stream, but Pope Francis has been speaking too uh, about that importance of grandparents. As you know, he declared uh, the weekend uh, uh, particularly a time of prayer around the world in Thanksgiving. And it focuses in many ways on the feast that actually falls today, since Joachim and Anne, the grandparents of our Lord. Perhaps easy to overlook uh, the significance they would have had in his life. If Mary was able to respond so promptly to the call of the angel, then it must surely be because as she grew up, she knew that faith within the family home. And so we come to give thanks for the lives of these two. We come to give thanks for the lives of grandparents in every generation. We come to pray that we may be worthy of our inheritance. And we ask again the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. So let us pray. O Lord, God of our fathers, who bestowed on Saints Joachim and Anne this grace, that of them should be born the mother of your incarnate Son, grant through the prayers of both that we may obtain the salvation you have promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis, or Exodus. Moses made his way back down the mountains with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, tablets inscribed on both sides, inscribed on the front and on the back. These tablets were the work of God, and the writing of that was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting. There is a sound of battle in the camp, he told Moses. Moses answered him, no song of victory is this sound. No waiting for defeat this sound. It is the sound of chanting that I hear. As he approached the camp and saw the calf and the groups dancing, Moses' anger blazed. He threw down the tablets. He was holding and broke them at the, front, uh, at the foot of the mountain. He seized the calf they had made and burned it, grinding it into powder, which he scattered on the water and he made the sons of Israel drink it. To Aaron, Moses said, what has this people done to you for you to bring such a great sin on them? Let not my Lord's anger blaze like this, Aaron answered. You know yourselves how prone this people is to evil. They said to me, make us a God to go to at our head. This Moses, the man who brought us up from Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, who has gold? 
and they took it off and brought it to me. I threw it into the fire, and out came the scarf. On the following day, Moses said to the people, You have committed a grave sin, but now I shall go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. And Moses returned to the Lord. I am grieved, he cried. This people has committed a grave sin, making themselves a god of gold. And yet, if it pleased you to forgive this sin of theirs, but if not, then blot out from the book that you have written. The Lord answered Moses, It is a man who has sinned against me that I shall blot out from my book. Go now, lead the people to the place of which I told you. My angel shall go before you, but on the day of my visitation, I shall punish from them from their sins. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, the word of God. The Lord, for he is good. They fashioned a calf at Horeb and worshipped an image of metal, exchanging the God who was their glory for the image of a bull that eats grass. Oh, give oh, thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. They forgot the God who was their saviour, who had done such great things in Egypt, such portents in the land of Ham, such marvels at the Red Sea. O oh, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. For this he said he would destroy them. But Moses, the man he had chosen, stood in the breach before him to turn back his anger from destruction. O oh, oh, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. Please stand for the opening. Alleluia, alleluia. Through the good news, God has called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. And the Lord bring the heart and the lips that you have became his gospel worthily and well. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put a parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and shelter on its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, till it was leavened all through. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfill the prophecy, I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first part of Matthew chapter 13, Jesus tells three parables about sowing in quick succession. The parable of the seed falling on stony ground and upon rich soil. The parable of the sowing of good seed and an enemy sowing weeds in it by night. The one we've just heard about sowing a mustard seed. All told to an audience consisting of local men who knew all about agriculture. And to balance that, he tells the fourth parable about a woman and the domestic process of bread making. This morning, I should like to relate all four to our approach to prayer. Take the mustard seed first. The man with the mustard seed needed to consider carefully where he wanted his mustard tree. Because once it takes roots, it spreads and you can't get rid of it. It was the biblical equivalent of Japanese knotweed and you don't want that spreading underneath your crops. Secondly, we may have this nice image of a tree with lots and lots of colourful birds perching in it. Well, the last thing a farmer wants, is, uh, wants to create is an attraction for the birds 
who are going to eat up his seeds, dig for worms, and generally spoil his crops. So the lesson here is that before we sit down or kneel to pray, we need to find a spot where our prayers will not be disturbed, avoiding the Japanese knotweed, and we don't drift off into building a prayer structure which is not going to help us, the birds in the tree. Consider the housewife using the yeast to make bread. Now, yeast, or leaven, also has a bad side. Leaven in the Jewish tradition often had a symbolic meaning of evil, the tendency to sin in an individual. Because yeast is not inert, it is a fungus. And that's why each year all the yeast must be swept out of the house before Passover. That's why the Passover is the feast of the unleavened bread. And we too, we must eliminate all the old leaven before approaching God in prayer. We're used to confessing our sins at the beginning of Mass, so we should also do that at the start of our prayers. Now for the parable of the sir. In this parable, the seed is only partially successful because of the lackadaisical approach of the sower, throwing the seed all around indiscriminately, not checking whether it was going to do any good. Do we approach prayer like that? Has it become a semi-automatic process without really considering what the words mean and to whom we're addressing them? Or are we concentrating our prayers to achieve a 100% effect? And in the parable of the seed and the weeds, the farmer started out right and took care, but then someone else sowed weeds among his wheat. And this is what may happen to us in prayer. We start out right, but distractions occur. And it's then that we must make a judgment. Do we give up? Or do we carry on recognising the distractions for what they are? The answer is that we cannot eliminate distractions from our time of prayer, but we must work through them and may not attain our resolve until the end. So we have in these four parables some useful guidance for our personal prayer. The mustard seed. Select a good and suitable place for prayer. The yeast. Start by confessing our sins at the beginning of our prayer. The sour and the stony ground. Remain focused in prayer. Don't wander about mentally. Look for the good soil. And the wheat and the weeds. Recognise distractions for what they are and persevere to the end. So, if you would like a good prayer guide, read Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 34. Let's send our <clears throat> you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. Pray in the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all your churches. Receive, we pray, O Lord, these offerings of our homage, and grant that we may merit to share in the same blessing which you promised to Abraham and his descendants through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints. And in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave, he, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Joachim, St. Anne, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Of the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
sort of mentioned at the beginning of the Mass intention today, was that Tessie O'Rourke may rest in peace. So let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should be born from among humanity, so that by a wonderful mystery humanity might be born again from you, we pray that in your kindness you may sanctify by the spirit of adoption those you have fed with the bread you give to your children, through Christ our Lord. I thank Deacon Michael particularly for the homily uh, this morning. Can I thank Nick for making it possible for others to join us on live stream, and again the stewards for making it possible for us to be here together in church. If you're considering um, coming back, do please be reassured. I think it is one of the safest places uh, in Guildford. Uh, the benches uh, are now um, split. Um, basically, uh, on this side is the socially distanced, which means people sit every other bench. On this side is what Father Roy has taken to calling free range, uh, which means people can sit in every bench, uh, and therefore uh, the, the numbers can increase. Um, if anyone on the any bench side is a little nervous about people actually sat next to them in the bench, there are some signs which can be collected on the way in, just asking people to keep that next seat next to them uh, free. Uh, they are used once because of contaminating them. <laughs> I was suggesting to people yesterday that you might want to take them home afterwards, put them on the settee at home or uh, on the dining room table or anywhere. You want to be left in a bit of peace, you could just spread them around your house as you gradually uh, get a collection of them. The only other thing that remains important, well, apart from masks, is do please make sure uh, you check in. Uh, not everyone may have been able to check in this morning, so if you could make sure, please, that you check out, uh, and then the system will know that you were here uh, for track and trace. Um, otherwise, poor old Sandy has to spend the day ringing people up to find out. There will be evening prayer this evening uh, at six. We will focus on Joachim and Anne and their role uh, as grandparents, so a big part of it will be ensuring that we pray for grandparents. If there's anyone, particularly the younger generations, who would like your grandparents prayed for by name, do please let us know, office at cpg.church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.